Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! And tragedy unfolding up on tragedy at the moment across the Western world. Of course, I, I, and this isn't a political point, it's just a point of reference. Uh, of course, in the Eastern world, in the Middle East, the sort of carnage that we're seeing on our streets at the moment would be considered a good day. Uh, the numbers, the tens, the hundreds of thousands of people being killed routinely and daily still in places like Iraq and Afghanistan put our current troubles in the shade. But it doesn't feel that way, does it? It feels when you're close to the action as if the action is relevant to you. And the action we're looking at at the moment is about as grim as anyone in this country will be able to remember since the heyday of the IRA. Except it's, thank the Lord, not happening to us yet. It probably will. These, these are some things I want to say to you. When these stories break, for example, I was in a newsroom on Friday when the uh, news of the shootings in Munich began to break. You, you, you can almost sense the sort of activism the atavistic urge some people have to see the latest story confirm their position. So some people who would be, I suppose, described as liberal are desperately hoping it's not another Islamist terrorist, another terrorist claiming to be doing the work of Allah when he kills lots and lots of innocent people. People on the other side of the fight, and it's somewhat uncomfortably, but I think it's fair to say, uh, because the deaths have already happened, so it would probably be a little excessive to suggest that people are, are glad that they've happened because it proves their point. But people on the other side of the argument, people who are increasingly keen to see innocent people punished for the actions of these guilty murderers, they, they hope it is uh, linked to Islamic State or, or, or is built upon some sort of Quranic rationale. And they would use that to prove that they were right all along. You, you'd see it with regard not just to religion, but to the refugee crisis as well. The latest events in Germany, certainly the appalling uh, stabbing of a pregnant Polish woman outside a kebab shop, run down that killer by the son of the owner of the kebab shop, um, known uh, only as Alpa at the moment, a Turkish name. Uh, and I, I mention that because it, it just makes such a hodgepodge, doesn't it? It makes such a, a mixture of nationality and background if it turns out that the Syrian man who did it, suffering from pretty severe mental health crisis, two recent suicide attempts, carrying a large knife around with him and run over by, one presumes, as a, as a Turk called Alpa, the Muslim son of the cafe owner. You, you, you see what I mean? It's why I find it so hard to be as binary and tribal as some people in my profession are comfortable being and then you have this uh, suicide bomber this would-be suicide bomber outside the music festival in germany that appears to be the closest to a textbook terrorist if you like out of all the recent events but the reason i mention how, how desperate some people seem to be to see every story as proof that they're right about everything it's because it, it it, it misses the point. I was really uncomfortable on Saturday. I don't know about you, but there was almost a sort of celebratory air about the fact that the Munich gunman hadn't turned out to be an Islamist terrorist. And I, and I understand why. I, I'd go so far as to describe relief as being something I can understand if you're frightened about the terrorists winning, as in turning ordinarily decent people against each other. That's what terrorism is designed to do. It, it, it almost felt celebratory. It was quite unseemly. It, it overlooked the fact that nine people, nine innocent people were dead. One guilty one. It, it, almost a sense of celebration. Do you, do you get that? I'm not sounding mad, am I? I thought, well, you see, this one wasn't. But I thought to myself, well, the next one will be. The next one will be claiming to act for Islamic State. And what, what, what can you do to prevent that? These slightly trite questions. How can we cope with this? Close the borders. Well, that won't really work. Certainly in the case of the Munich killer, he, he was born there. You can't, you can't do a lot about those sort of borders. Same with the July the 7th attackers. Same with the uh, Lee Rigby killers. So what, what can you do to stop this stuff? There's two things, I think. If I was running Islamic State, there's two things I'd want, okay, from the West at the moment. I'd want you to tell everybody that you think lives in the Middle East are worth less than lives in Europe. I'd want, I'd, that's the message I'd want you to be sending out if I was running Islamic State, I think. I'd want you to be, give me proof that I can give to some poor deluded 
wannabe terrorist. Here, look, here's proof they think your life is worth less than theirs. Look, look, you don't just need to point to the casualty rates in Iraq and Afghanistan and Syria. You need to actually find people who are prepared to stand up in public and say, I think your lives are worth less than mine. I don't care if people are being killed on a daily basis in Iraq. I don't care if people are being blown up as a, as a, as a, as a matter of routine in Syria. I don't care that these are countries we've recently invaded and imported epic amounts of ordnance and armament into. I, I need people in Britain to stand up now and say your lives are worth less. So that if I'm trying to radicalise a young person in Germany or in Britain or in Belgium, I can point at these politicians and these members of the media and say, there you go, look, they, they, they're the ones that say it. They think your lives are worth less than theirs. They think that because you're white or European or you were born here instead of there, your life is worth less. And they go in on that. And that, that's the first thing I'd really like to happen if I was running Islamic State. The second thing I need to do is, is the God bit. And this is why I think some people get so frustrated when there's an attempt to suggest that Islam has nothing to do with terrorism. If the terrorists say they're doing it because of Islam, it is an Islamist or, or, or an Islamic attack. I understand why the words can be so hurtful and why people get so upset about it. But it's pointless, pointless to pretend that their motivation isn't religious, okay? Yeah, absolutely pointless. And for everybody who tells me that Islam is a religion, for every million people that remind me Islam is mostly a religion of peace, I only have to find one bloke who's prepared to blow himself up in its name to suggest and indeed prove conclusively that it isn't. <laughs> you sort of cancel each other out because neither of you can prove that you're right. That's the point about God. Nobody can ever prove anything. So I need to get people in the West standing up and saying publicly and out loud that our lives are worth more than theirs. That's the first step towards radicalization. I get people to do that. And then I need to convince these clowns that they're going to heaven. And I don't think that this analysis is relevant to the Munich killings, and I don't think it's relevant to the stabbing either. But it must be relevant to the bloke with the backpack full of shrapnel who was trying to get into a music festival. That, that must have been, mustn't it? Uh, an actual full-on Islamist terror attack. Thank God he only blew himself up. And please God, the people nearby who were injured will be okay. But these two things, so on, on the one side, people, politicians, pundits, you could probably name them off the top of your head, who, who will now publicly state, uh, yeah, do you think that Germany was the home of Nazism less than a lifetime ago? Uh, yeah, not actual Nazism. So it suggests that somehow there's a, there's a different mindset in Western Europe which gave us Nazism compared to all the people being blown up in the Middle East. It's actually nuts. It's probably about as close as you'll get to a textbook definition of racial hatred. Oh no, I like them. They're German. Yeah, but the, what? Oh no, no, if they die, I really care. But if they are, that's 21 people found dead from petrol fumes in a boat that beached up in Greece at the weekend. Don't care about them. I had 250,000 civilians killed in Iraq last year. I don't care about them. I care about this woman in Germany. Of course I do. That's just inhumane. That's inhumane. But the point I'm interested in today is heaven. And I know this will sound strange. But I don't know how you can teach somebody. I, I, I say this as a churchgoer. A really uncomfortable question I've got for you now, and if you are religious, I need your help in answering it. Because if you've got these two things, you need the political and you need the spiritual to radicalize someone. The political's pretty easy, okay? The political is pretty easy. The idea that you can prove to this young person here that the people he's going to attack really do despise him and look down on him. If, if his family have been killed in Syria and you can open up a newspaper column and read somebody saying, I don't care, I don't care if people are getting blown up in Syria, I don't care if people are getting blown up in the Middle East, then you're halfway there. You're halfway to pushing him over the line. What's the next bit you need? The next bit you need is the religion. And the religion is all about the afterlife. This is what Marx meant when he described it as the opiate of the people. The thought that you're going to get your reward in heaven is what enables you to put up with being treated like dung on earth. That's Marx in a nutshell on religion. You, you, you promise them the afterlife, the meat will inherit the earth. Great, great news. So I just have to put up with this while I'm here, do I? And then I get all eternity to celebrate. It's very attractive. You can see why it's worked throughout the years. But when it comes to terrorism, you're actually doing the same thing. You're teaching these people that they will go to heaven if they do this thing. I was brought up believing I would go to heaven if I was kind and compassionate and generous. 
I think that's now, even that's been maligned, hasn't it, by the right wing in this country. They now call it virtue signalling. If you, if you try and do your duty as a, as, a, as a donor to charity or you give up your time to help other people or you argue for people who are voiceless, that's virtue signalling. It's also the definition of Christianity, in my view. I was taught growing up, I would go to heaven if I looked after those who were less fortunate than me. If I, well, you know how it works. If I obeyed the Ten Commandments, if I didn't commit adultery, if I didn't covet my neighbour's wife, if I didn't kill anyone. I was also taught, of course, uh, it's a letter of St. Paul for me, the very, uh, the single most fundamental element of Christianity, to love my neighbour and to turn the other cheek. I mean, these are really hardcore teachings, incredibly difficult to live your life like that. Turn the other cheek? What, even after someone's punched me? Yes. Turn the, love my neighbour, even when my neighbour is... I don't know, having really loud parties at four o'clock in the morning. Yes, you've got to love your neighbour. That's Christianity. And that's what I was taught. And it was a pretty healthy lesson. And, and, and I hope, you know, regardless of whether you believe in God or not, we all recognise the, the fundamental beauty of trying to love your neighbour, the fundamental decency of trying to be good to each other. But the reward is heaven. Self-sacrifice. See? Don't go and have sex with that woman over there that you're not married to, even though you reckon she's up for it even though you probably enjoy it. Don't do it, because that would be wrong. Well, why wouldn't I do it? Because you'll get your reward in heaven. All right, there's, there's, I've just seen a £50 note fall out of somebody's pocket as I'm walking up the street. I'm going to pocket it and spend it all on beer. No, don't do that. Thou shalt not steal. Why not? You'll get your reward in heaven. I hate this. I hate this. I don't know how you can discuss people who've been persuaded to go and blow themselves up in a crowd in order to get into heaven without also recognising that it's the other side of the same coin that I was taught to be excellent to people, to try to be a decent person and to try to do the right thing because that would get you into heaven. If we're teaching that heaven is a reward for earthly behaviour, how do you separate terrorism from that? This is probably the biggest question I've ever asked you. I make no apology for posing it at 10 o'clock on a Monday morning. We are living in quite frightening times. In fact, I would say we are living in terrorised times. The terrorists are winning. Yeah, you only have to turn on your radio, open your newspaper, flick on your television to see the evidence that the terrorists are winning. Decent, law-abiding, peaceful people, increasingly persuaded that that life is worth more than that life, that that person who's done nothing wrong must be punished because of the actions of that person that has done something wrong, and that the innocent must now suffer for the actions of the guilty. It's out there. It's happening. The lid is off. I'm trying to look for a way into it for our conversation this morning that actually might constitute some form of enlightenment or progress. And this is all I've got. If I was brought up being taught that by behaving in a certain way I was likely to go to heaven, how do you undo the teachings? How do you address the rhetoric of people teaching I, I'm going with the backpacker at the music festival because the details about the others is still pretty blurred. He's been taught he'll go to heaven if he blows himself up in the middle of that crowd. I've been taught I'll go to heaven if I obey the Ten Commandments. What's the difference? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. What's the difference? I, I don't think there is one. But I'm really hoping you can help. Is it, talking about religion, and it, it must feel unfortunate if you were in church yesterday minding your own business, lighting a candle, saying a few prayers, to somehow now be part of the same conversation about terrorism that you've heard many times before. But I, I've had an uncomfortable thought, and that thought is this. I was brought up to believe that acting in a certain way would, would mean I went to heaven, okay? And that is true of almost everybody that's been indoctrinated into any religion. Behave in a certain way, you will go to heaven. That's on one side of the coin. On the other side of the coin, you have people apparently persuaded that by blowing themselves up at music festivals or, 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 blow, or, or marching into the Bataclan Theatre or the offices of Charlie Hebdo, they will go to heaven. I just want to try to put a bit more distance between those two observations. I just want to try to, if I can, in some way um, separate the two because it's such a deeply uncomfortable thought. The number you need, once again, is 0345 606097. Three. You can email james at lbc.co.uk, you can text me on 84850, and you can tweet at Mr. James O.B. I should just, a bit of a problem with the phone, there's one phone line free if you're quick, okay? And Neil's in Pinner. And Neil, what would you like to say? I want to separate these two things. I was taught I'd go to heaven if I behaved like that. The terrorist is taught he'd go to heaven if he behaves like this. What's the difference? Uh, the difference is straightforward. You're allowed a sense of discrimination and thought. He isn't. Your Ten Commandments have been boiled down to one commandment, a belief in Muhammad as the prophet and a belief in God, with no other God being there. 
to the possibility of doubt, the possibility of questioning, the possibility of self-inquiry. All of this has been eliminated. Well, it, 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 I mean, in the mind of the terrorist, it has. But they, you, you could say the same about any any religious terrorist. It isn't it isn't unique to the Muslim religious terrorist. It was it was true of the I don't know the Spanish Inquisition. It was true of the IRA in part. Some of them were religiously motivated. It, it is true of the Hindus, uh, the Tamils who killed off Rajiv Gandhi or whatever. It's yes. true of all terrorists all through time. I agree, but the point is with the Muslim, with great respect. It is carried to an extreme, uh, which is basically not being reflected upon because vigilantism... Well, you can say with great respect, Anil, and then say something quite spectacularly disrespectful. Let me try. No, I, 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 I'm listening to you, but, but I'm, I'm, I want to know what the difference is between their belief that they're going to go to heaven and the, the beliefs I was taught by nuns and monks throughout my life. That's all. That's all right, I want. Your belief, right, your belief never allowed you violence. Of vigilantism. It doesn't matter. It's just it's, 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 it's the same reward. It's the same result for different behaviours. I was taught I'd go to heaven if I shared my sweets with my sister. He's been taught he'll go to heaven if he blows himself up at a music festival. I guess what I'm nudging you towards is the suggestion that heaven is the problem here. Well, the problem isn't heaven. The problem is the guy who is promoting heaven in a particular way. Well, but they're all promoting heaven in a particular way. Well, not really. Yes, yeah, every religious leader on the planet is promoting heaven in a particular no, way. Everyone has got everyone has got bait, a uh, uh, hook, and things like that. But in this particular case, the bait is such that it is totally unavoidable from a very very young age. My my own people. Well, then, then 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 we'd have then we'd have billions and billions of terrorists running around the world with bombs strapped to their backsides. And thank the Lord we don't. It's an uncomfortable thought, possibly too uncomfortable for you, Anil, to suggest or to reflect upon the fact that if you are religious, if you go to church, you've been taught that behaving in a certain way will get you a reward in the afterlife. We're all taught that. We're all taught that. I'm probably going to get excommunicated for this. What's the difference? What's the difference between teaching people to do good things to get their reward in heaven and teaching people to do bad things? Heaven, it would seem to me, is the problem. Darren's in Camberwell. Darren, what would you like to say? I would like to say that uh, I don't believe Christianity does teach that you do the right thing to get to heaven. It teaches that the, the, the purpose of the Ten Commandments isn't even to make us do the right thing and stop there. It's to make us realize our sinfulness and then realize that we need a savior. What does the meek shall inherit the earth mean? Uh, it's a promise to those who are meek that they shall inherit the earth. Right. Well, there you go. So don't, don't make a fuss. You'll get your reward in heaven. That was easy. No, but it's a promise to believers, so it's that going from point yes, to point. Yes, exactly. It's a promise to believers that if they behave in a certain way, they'll get their reward in heaven. But you told you rang up to tell me it wasn't that. Yeah, well, believers will get a reward, but based upon what they do. But the, the reward is not really initially based upon what they do. So based no, upon you're losing it now, Darren. Okay, let me start again. Good idea. So if you want to go to heaven, um, you can say, okay, I won't lie, I won't steal, I won't fornicate and do all these things. I'll be meek. But it, yes. I'll be poor. But if, if we're meek, but if, we, if we're meek and if we're poor, or if we're meek and we do all these things, we, we're still sinful. Therefore, we don't have a right to heaven. And even if we say from tomorrow, I'll do all the good deeds in the world, I'll never sin again, the sins of our past still condemn us. Yeah, that, that's not really relevant to what we're discussing. I, I know you're sort of the giving me reason, you're giving me entry level born again Christianity, but the bottom yeah, but the line is you're taught by all religions that behaving in a certain way will will secure you reward. Mm. No. Yes. Also, also. Well, no, just yes. Okay, let me let me try and decide. Mate, you've uh, had your crack. Alice is in Hackney. Alice, what would you like to say? Oh, hi. So, yeah, I think this is the, the issue that you're talking about, is that you get, it, with religion, it's a sense of reward. Um, the do a certain thing, you'll get a reward, whereas, uh, which is, you know, if it end up being a good person, um, then that, that works well. Yes. It makes you a good person. Well, if the, if the less, well, it kind of works well. Marx would disagree. It leads to centuries of oppression, and it means that the working class never rise up against their rulers because they're waiting for their reward in heaven. But, but I'll take your point. Yeah, but what, um, but what is unfortunate due to the, I think, society in general that is not really getting to know, okay, how do we actually function as human beings in a way that benefits all outside of religion, which is the sense that when you really go deep and you really just are present um, with, with your core being, 
you you realise that you are happiest when you don't harm others, and they are. No, you you do, um, but, but but another religion might teach you that the best way to get to heaven is to go and bash someone's head in. All religions have done that in the past. Yeah, we did it during the Crusades, and they succeed with people that haven't already been taught this experience in in life. And if I think no, <laughs> if you opened up your newspaper and read, if you if you read a, a prominent politician or pundit in this country saying that I don't care if people called Alice get killed, I only care if people called James get killed. Uh, Alice's are inferior. I don't care about Alice's dying. I don't care how many Alice's are dying in this world. It's only people called James I care about. And then someone came along and said, "You see that bloke over there? He hates Alice's. If you kill him, you'll go to heaven." Uh, you, you can see how that's that's half the job done. Oh no, I've, and I've all, yeah, and I've always said that, particularly for these vulnerable young younger people who. Uh, I haven't had any other influences. That, that it's amazing. It's like, it makes so much sense. Wow, it's so easy to get that reward. Um, but the only, I mean, the only way you can stop them once they get to that point is, well, actually, okay, you might go to heaven um, in another way by actually, you can extend your life on earth and actually enjoy it by realizing when you do good things, it can actually make you feel good and it can make other people feel good. And then you also get to heaven. It, that's not the only I, way. I, 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 I mean, your optimism, you're, 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 you're religious yourself, are you, Alice? Um, I'm spiritual. I believe that I don't give God or a name. Because I, I yeah, the course. alternative is too bleak to contemplate, as it is for many people, that this is it. Uh, you know, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. <laughs> to, to, to coin a slightly inappropriate religious phrase. And, and I, I understand that. But if, if you, once you admit the possibility of heaven existing, you don't get to control what people get taught they have to do to get there. Best thing I've read recently uh, on this issue is that there might have been a mistranslation in the relevant passage of the Quran that promises 72 virgins in order for uh, as a reward for, for waging jihad. Um, there's a suggestion from some scholars that that was actually a mistranslation of raisins. And, and what happens when you get to heaven is you actually get given 72 particularly sweet raisins. Uh, which I mention for two reasons. Number one, to highlight the absurdity of any fundamentalist reading of any religious text. But number two also, to, to actually say even if you were getting virgins, that's what you're being taught. How do you stop them doing it? I was taught that by being excellent to each other, I increased my likelihood of going to heaven. I've taught that all my life. I'm still taught that now on Sundays when I go to church. They're taught that by blowing themselves up at a, at a, at a music festival or marching into a theatre with a gun or driving a truck down the promenade in Nice, they increase their chances of going to heaven. Yeah, they might be mentally fragile as well and they might have a history of violence as well, but that is the bottom line. Someone has persuaded them they're going to go to heaven if they do this. How can you ever stop that happening without abolishing heaven? You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. The time is half past ten. We could have the operational discussions about what we can do to make ourselves safer, to be less terrorised, but it's all so much hot air ultimately if people are being persuaded to kill us and indeed themselves with heaven as the reward then I'm afraid uncomfortable though it is the problem is the teaching of the existence of heaven and I say it's uncomfortable it might not be for you you might be an agnostic or an atheist or someone who's never or managed to shrug off the yoke of institutional religion um, some of the best people I know are uh, uh, deeply religious. So some of the best people I've ever known are deeply religious. I was taught through most of my life by nuns and monks, and they taught me that on this earth, in this life, behaving in certain ways and believing in certain principles enhances or increases your likelihood of spending eternal life in heaven. I know how, I do for the record, know how ridiculous that sounds to many, many people, but that's just how religion works. Getting some great quotes through today, apparently Napoleon once said that religion was invented to stop poor people murdering rich people. But if you accept in this country, as we do, that Muslims, Jews, Christians, Hindus, Sikhs are mostly taught that by being good and decent, by loving their neighbour, I'm only really deeply familiar with the Christian theology, forgive me, but I recognise the intersection and the shared foundations of all of those, especially the Abrahamic ones, then you would have a better chance of meeting your maker, right? That's, that's just a given. So if other people are being taught from the same principle that behaving in a certain way will increase their chance of getting to heaven, how do we stop it? How do we separate the two? Paul's in Windsor. Paul, what would you like to say? Uh, morning, James. Just a little uh, one for you this morning, Paul. Just a little sort of easy, easy going uh, Monday morning question. <laughs> little easy morning question, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I was brought up like yourself, very, very religious. Uh, I was actually raised a Mormon, which Gosh. is, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. I'm not a Mormon anymore, but I, I went through the whole thing, the whole teenage 
uh, raised in the Mormon faith. I was a Mormon missionary um, for two years uh, down in South London. And I left the Mormon faith when I was about uh, 20, 25, 26, 27, around there. And it was a very long uh, extradition out of uh, the Mormon faith. Yes. I think that was one of the questions, that re- one of the points you've just made really resonated with me, which is about people. Oh, oh, Paul, the phone line's going a, the phone line's going a bit funny. I'm, I, I want you to come back. We'll try and sort that out. I know how annoying it is for people listening, but trust me, it's even more annoying for me. John's in Rygate in the meantime. John, what would you like to say? Good morning, James. Oh, I appreciate your, your clear thinking on this. I, I do think that you are correct to draw a parallel between um, enforcing uh, negative, harmful behaviour with the, with with the carrot on the end of the stick yes. and uh, and enforcing positive, positive decent behaviour with that, or, or virtue yeah, signalling, as we have to call it these days. In, in, indeed, but let me just throw another perspective at you as a, as a way to look at this, because I think that. I think the problem is exactly what you say it is. I think that, that the idea of heaven is a deep problem. And I think that this may shock you, but I think it's a slightly immoral concept. Because mm. if you frame morality in the way that if you say to people, be good, do this, do that, treat people nicely. And and the reason for doing that is that you will then go to heaven. Yeah. What you're doing is you're essentially um, boiling all of morality and kindness down to self-interest. Yes. Right, And so you're saying the reason for doing this, the reason for being kind to people, the reason for treating people kindly is because you're going to get a reward at the end. And actually, morality is much richer if you say, well, actually, there are intrinsic reasons for being kind to people, intrinsic reasons for being compassionate. And, and those reasons are to do with everybody benefiting and general welfare of people and society. There's still a degree of self-interest in that. There, is, there is. That's absolutely right. And and I would argue that there's a sort of appropriate degree, right? So it's a it's it's self it's a self interest which is uh, you derive it from the fact that that uh, we all want to thrive, right? We all want to live and we want to prosper, yes. and and societies live and prosper well when there's a social contract and people understand that actually, if you found a society on the basis of killing each other and and eating each other's wives, it's not going to work very well. It's not going to pan out well, and 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 and, and actually that. Kind Kind of um, uh, that kind of societal um, reciprocity is found in the animal kingdom too. So you've got you've got you know um, primates um, and and even even other other mammals that that have kind of codes of behaviour where they regulate their behaviour because they 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 know the greater good way. as it were the greater good yeah and and, and it work and it works well and I, I have much more respect for somebody who. Um, does good deeds and looks out for other people because of a genuine interest in the wealth, the well-being of other people, than someone who says that they are. I, I do as well, and it's it's a great point that you make. I, I, a little bit Emmanuel Kantian, if you'd allow me to to to, to compliment no. you in the highest in the highest way available. But you can be both, of course. I don't want anybody to think we're suggesting that that everybody who is both religious and uh, a bit special, a bit, a bit, bit decent, is doing it simply because they get their reward in heaven. The, the, it's almost a, the reward is is itself. The the reward is seeing the happiness. The reward is seeing the result of your decent behaviour. And you could say you could say that that um, that there are two rewards, right? So the first reward is that you get to be a good person and help other people, and the secondary reward is, and you also get to go to this lovely place afterwards. Yes, I, I, you're right. But, but how? And, and I need to get back to Paul because the, 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 uh, he's been on hold for a long time. But the the question for you would be then, how can you, under your analysis, how can you stop people believing they're going to get to heaven for killing others, while still teaching other people that they're going to get to heaven for being excellent? I don't believe you can. Oh, man. Oh, man, John. I, I, I actually don't think you can, and I think that's what the Enlightenment is about, if I'm, if I'm honest. I think, I think that, that we, need to, we need to evolve... Back to Kant, aren't we? Grown, ...grown-up <laughs> way of looking. Well, yeah, just, just a more grown-up way of looking at what, uh, at what you should and shouldn't and, do. And, and possibly, and I hate to say this, as I, as I've, I've, I've stressed repeatedly this morning, that, that you know a lot of the best people I've known have been religious, and, and I count priests and monks among my closest friends. But... In a way, if you really, really want to address the problem of people believing that by being foul they'll go to heaven, you probably have to start undermining, dismantling, addressing the teachings of people 
that by being excellent you'll go to heaven. How can you get rid of one without somehow getting rid of the other? John, thank you so much. Um, Paul, back to you, the ex-Mormon. Where were we? You were just extricating, <laughs> extricating yourself from the religion. Extricating myself from yes. the, the Mormon religion, and it was it was a long process, and it and it was painful, and it upset my family, and I lost a lot of friends, and of yada yada yada. And it was a very very intense, very very intense religion, the Mormonism. You know, it, it is a full on way of life. You're all in or you're all out, and and a lot of ways what that's done for me is it's really helped me or it's really allowed me I think to understand um, Islam which is in a lot of ways very similar it's a full-on way of life uh, you know it absorbs all aspects of your life your culture your social life uh, uh, what you believe in how you look at politics how you look at the world uh, how you look at the relationships with your family but all, all, all religions are like that I mean because not every Muslim subs I guess Mormonism is slightly different but you, you know I know loads of Muslims that eat bacon for example so so not everybody is living it to such a extreme degree that yes I would agree with that and and uh, it, but it is a challenge I think if, yes. if Muslims that, that you know they are challenged and they get a lot of finger wagging in the same way that I would have if I had had a beer while I was a, yes. a you know a practicing Mormon uh, but when I come back to the reasons why I extradited or why I decided I'd had enough of it and got myself out of it I think there were two reasons one is the supremacy of the Mormon faith, mm -hmm. and I think all religions again have a, there's a certain supremacy that comes with them, it's a spiritual supremacy, it's a cultural supremacy, and really you know, uh, when I was a practicing Mormon, and when I was in the thick of it in my mindset, it was very much this is the true Christian faith and we are the ones who are going to inherit the absolute highest degrees in heaven. Uh, and all and that, that's what they all, that, that, that for me Absolute, and I yeah. say this as a, as, a, as a Catholic, or someone raised a Catholic still go to church they all do that. that that is the thing that really when you're young and you i suspect you went through something similar to me when your skepticism kicks in when you're young and you look at this religion that's around you it's this notion that we're better than everybody else either you go all in at that point or or, or you start drawing away right Exactly. So you've got these two kind of ace cards that they give you. One is superiority, a sense of being chosen, a sense of being, you know, yeah. special and anointed and, yeah. and morally and spiritually superior to, in God's eyes to everybody else. And the second thing is that you're going to get more rewards in the next life yeah. than anybody else. So, so because of that superiority, uh, uh, that, uh, that, which I was very, very familiar with my with my upbringing. Uh, you then look at how, as you get older and you move away from it, you then really understand how politicians or the political process can exploit those two ace cards for for violence, and that's something that's gone through history forever. I mean, forever. The Crusades, the English Civil War, even in the First World War, you know, the, the, the priests and the, the, the pastors were all out there in the trenches on both sides, blessing the soldiers, telling them that this was a spiritual fight, that this was, you know, God wanted us to win, etc., etc. Et all through British history, religion has played, played a big part in, in the way that our, our, our armies have gone to war, and with, with every army, every army, the, 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 there's been a religious... Uh, uh, if you were, if you were a, 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 a Muslim, a Muslim person, and you did look at the world, you would probably, and, and so many of these arguments and conversations lead back to the Middle East inevitably, and to Israel in particular, you, 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 you would find it pretty hard to shake the notion that your religion was not being cast as inferior to other religions by, by the West. You just, you, you would just struggle to do that. So if you're looking to radicalize someone, that's, that's the first little entry point that you start with. Look what's going on in Gaza. Look what they're doing to, quotes, our people. And then, and then that's the seed from which the, the terrorism grows. James, without question, I've spoken to so many uh, Muslim uh, people, taxi drivers, yeah. people that I, I've met in work, et cetera, et cetera, who have come out with those theories about the West being at war with Islam, trying to destroy, the West is trying to destroy Islam, uh, the, the, the West, the, you know, the, the, the Jewish Zionists, run the world, these conspiracies, and it is really quite alarming that, that the vacuum that has been filled by a certain, a certain sector within the, the, the Muslim community who are peddling these theories and theologies and ideologies 
into uh, into people in and around the community. But we're peddling the same ideologies now in the West as some, some members of our media are doing their work for them. If you're trying to persuade a young Muslim to go and blow himself up because the West thinks he's inferior or scum, you open up a newspaper and it says, I don't care about the tens of thousands of people who are getting killed in Afghanistan. It's, I don't care about them. I only care about people who are a bit like me, a bit more like me. Then that, that's, that's radicalization 50% done. I couldn't agree with you more. I could not agree with you more. And I think that what what we have, uh, what we have failed to realise is that what is going on within the uh, within the broader Islam is a is a civil war. Uh, it's theological. It's political. It's uh, tribal. Mm. Uh, and that's that civil war is being played out and it has got a political objective uh, and that that civil war for want of a better word is also being played out in the UK not necessarily through violence and and uh, and, and politics but it is being played out in the mosques in the majids and all these things uh, within the, the UK where you have uh, two two philosophies within Islam. One is uh, a more secular, more rational. Yeah, okay, but even uh, then, uh, even uh, then, uh, you know, even then, you, you, we're kind of backsliding a bit in this conversation because we're now sort of saying, oh no, you could have a version of this religion that wasn't as bloody as the other version, but actually it's the existence of heaven that's the problem. Well, I, I mean, I think if people believe in an afterlife and they believe in heaven, it's going to be very difficult to take them away from that belief. It is, isn't it? Um, and, and, and of course, yeah. it's also going to be very difficult for, for, for those of us who, who are on the, if you like, the, the peaceful or the altruistic side of religion, who, who, who are being taught that you go to heaven by being excellent. It's going to be very hard to tell them to shut up. It's going to be very unfair to tell them that their message is part of the problem. But I can't help thinking, especially 45 minutes into this conversation with calls of Paul's quality, that, that, that there is something in this. It's an uncomfortable thought that I've been having for a while. If that person there has been taught that by blowing himself up he's going to go to heaven, how do you stop that person there from teaching someone else that they're going to go to heaven by being meek or decent or kind? It's, it's, it's the same reward for different behaviours. So they are parts, if you like. Perhaps not parts of the same problem, but they're two sides of the same coin. It's 10.47. Listening to you at work is ace, James, but to do it on holiday under a palm tree with a beer in hand is the way to go. And Gary, thanks for providing a photograph as well, mate. Yeah, cheers. Thanks a bunch. Uh, as ever, my inbox providing uh, provocation and solace. Michael uh, gives me genuine pause. You really do, my friend. Because uh, I, 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 I'd actually... I'd fought a little bit shy of saying this out loud, but he's gone all in on it. Hi, James. There is no difference between what you were taught at school and the beliefs of a suicide bomber. Religion is and always has been the problem. I think religion is a mental illness, and it lends itself to delusion. I grew up in a society that is still divided here in Northern Ireland. It's very sad. I read a lot of Richard Dawkins and have begun to understand evolution and science. Yes, it is dust to dust for us, so let's all make the most of this great life that we have. <laughs> the problem is that an awful lot of people who describe themselves as religious are determined not to let us. But that line there is what we've been discussing this hour, although none of us have put it quite as boldly as Michael, or at least I haven't had the guts to do so. Probably Catholic guilt. There is no difference between what you were taught at school and the beliefs of a suicide bomber. Why, why can't I go and bash that person over the head and steal all their money? Well, it's the law of the land, but a moral law. You can have morality without religion, but humanity for the last 2,000, 6,000 years has, has used religion to sort of control a population in, in a good way, to encourage them not to bash each other over their head and steal and rape and pillage. All of these things. Why? Why can't I do those things? Oh, you'll get your reward in heaven. Why do you want me to go and blow myself up in a crowd full of people? Well, you'll get your reward in heaven. Heathcliff is in Camp Sands. Heathcliff, what would you like to say? Uh, start with a question, James. Yeah. If, um, does it say in the Quran that you're going to get 21 virgins if you do um, die for martyrdom? Because if it does... Well, I, I, there's, there's a suggestion this morning that, that actually it's, it's a mistranslation of the word raisins. Some people might be really big on raisins. I'm probably but, more go, go for the raisins than the virgins myself. Well, it's, it comes, it's age, Heathcliff. None of us are immune to the, to the march of old age. <laughs> Exactly. I've got more use for ranges than 21 young ladies. But, um, 72. Good knows where you'd start. Exactly. If, if it does say it in the book... Then the problem is the book. The problem is the instruction manual. Your instruction manual doesn't say to oh, it does. people who don't believe. It does if you know where to look. The old part and the new part. 
Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? A Bible's a Bible. Yeah, 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 no, but they updated it, didn't they? They brought it up, they brought it up to the 19th century or whatever. Well, yeah. that was turn the other cheek, so that would be saying if someone dro 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 blows us up today, we should invite someone else to do it tomorrow. Yeah, but they're still interpreting the Quran as in the 14th century. They haven't had a reinterpretation. Well, the, ter the terrorists, the fundamentalists are, certainly, but, but nobody else is. Well, I think if you look at Sharia law, they are. How? Because if you believe that you, if you stop believing in being a Muslim, then you should be put, put to death. Yeah. But well, but, and and when's the last time that, when's the last time that happened? What do you think honor, honor killings are? No, that's not stopping believing in, in Islam. Honor killings happen in other faiths as well, and it's the notion of yeah, bringing yeah, shame they, upon a family. But they have happened because people have turned away from the religion. No, it's, no that's not true. They've turned away from their family. They, they've, they've disgraced family honor, and there's nothing no, in Sharia exactly law... That. There's nothing in Sharia law that allows honor killings. I, I hate that yeah. phrase as well, actually. I, I think we need to come up with a better one. Murder. Because there's nothing honourable about it. So, it, it, the question, I, I, I'm not suggesting that you're trying to move us away from the central question, Heathcliff, but nevertheless, I'm going to steer you back towards it. What's the difference between me being taught that behaving in a certain way will get me to heaven, and a suicide bomber being taught that doing a suicide bombing will get him to heaven? The instructions that you're receiving from your instruction manual. So it's the same? Yeah. Well, I agree. Daniel's in Stoke Newington. Daniel, what would you like to say? James, let me let me let me start off by first saying I, I, I listen to your program quite a lot and I have the utmost respect for you. Big uh, butt coming. I like uh, big butts. I cannot lie. No 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 no. I, I this is one of the few times I, I, I want to encourage you to look at this particular subject from a slightly different angle. And let me explain to you what I mean. I'll go straight to the point of I, I, I've got a lot more calls to get through. It's ten fifty six and, and I'm quite pleased with how this hour have gone, but by all means tell me what we should have done differently. Okay, thank you. The the I'll, I'll speak from the perspective of a Muslim. Islam, you must understand, is not a pacifist way of life. That's the first, first thing that must be understood. Secondly, the idea that a person can get a reward of heaven as a result of strapping themselves with suicide bombing and killing innocent lives has nothing to do with the, what the teaching says and what the promise of heaven is. I, yeah, but, but, but you say that. The bloke who's just done it says different. You no, can't... no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Let, let, let me just explain two very let, different... Uh, you, no, no, when you say just let me explain, you can't say things that aren't true and then just say, no, 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 don't interrupt me, let me explain. The suicide bomber okay, believes he is going to heaven. The, the, the suicide bomber, here you have an individual who may be living in a part of the world where, for lack uh, of whatever the reasons may be, um, another country has invaded that country, for instance. His home has been destroyed, his life, uh, family's lives have been destroyed. At that precise moment, he has grievance in his heart. He then looks for ways and means to destroy those that he felt has caused him harm. He can't reach those people because they're flying on fighter jets and so on and so forth. So he looks for innocent civilians who look like the people who have bombed him, and he takes their lives unjustly. He does two wrongs there, according to the Quran. He's taken innocent life, which is wrong, and he's also committed suicide, which is against the Quran. So on the two fronts, he's gone against what the teaching says. So well, except he doesn't think he has that. No, you correct me all you want, my friend. I'm going to squeeze somebody else in. You can tell me until you're blue in the face that the book doesn't justify this sort of behavior. But as long as people are blowing themselves up believing that it does, your words are pointless. Matt's in Ascot. Matt, what would you like to say? Hiya, James. Hello, Matt. Uh, I find that I, I tend to ramble when I go on about this in detail, so I'll keep it simple. You will, because you've got a minute. <laughs> yeah. I recently lost my granddad. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm think, sorry, Matt. Uh, it's all right, thanks. I, I think I found, I found myself a bit exposed to what people, I don't know, faults in people, if you want to put it like that. Yes. I found people so materialistic around me, and I, I think that that is another one of those problems with religion, is that it plays on those fundamental faults that we that everyone really has and like wanting know, to be better wanting to be superior yeah and these extremists just play on not necessarily the most vulnerable but the most gullible to put it a little bit glib you know um and i mean i'm actually quite I, i'm a christian myself and i i really find it hard to understand the selfish side of religion but that's mainly because i've always found myself grounded as you so you you get comfort guidance and inspiration from religion yeah, and you're confused exactly. by the people who get a sort of validation for their own prejudices Ex exactly yeah. yeah me too
but we're not properly religious, you and me, because we're, we're we're not mm. we're not you know following every comma and every semicolon of of whatever religious text it is that 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 we're following. I and that, that is, and, and I won't I won't say much more. But these books were written by men, weren't they? Yeah, thousands of years ago, they weren't. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, some Muslims, well, not some Muslims, uh, uh, Christians believe that the Ten Commandments were handed down directly by God, and the Quran, I think, has a similar credo in in the context of of Islam. But that's that's the point. That's the uncomfortable truth that we've examined this hour. That actually, it's it's just the message. It's just the message that's different. The, the, the mode of delivery is exactly the same. The medium is identical. <laughs> Which I guess is why y y you see such confusion in the world and so many people so desperate to use these sort of tragedies to prove their own point. And the thing that changes everything is, is this notion that some humans are fundamentally inferior to others. So I really care when you get killed. Oh, but I don't care about the 80 people killed in Kabul yesterday. I just care about the Polish woman killed in Germany. That... That doesn't make sense, except in a newsroom. In a moral compass, that's completely corrupt. Completely corrupt.